welcome my name is abu francis i am an architect from india and this particular talk is about my software which i have been developing since 1989 it's been a long time and there are many things to talk about and uh, before we start let me just read out uh, the first uh, screen so here it says from tau tse ching 30 spokes share the wheel hub it's a center hole that makes it useful shape clay into a vessel it is a space within that makes it useful cut doors and windows for a room it is a holes which make it useful therefore profit comes from what is there usefulness from what is not there that kind of would set the background on which this particular software works and it works quite differently from many cad and bim software which you may have seen otherwise the reasons are many uh, and i will tell you a few of them and i hope you will be able to understand how the software works what are the concepts behind it and what are the context from which uh, the software was developed and probably the context in which uh, such software can be used so let me just begin uh, i am recording this on my macintosh so Uh, it's a windows software so i'm using an emulator so there's some screen differences so first i will resize the screen a uh, little bit so that uh, uh let me do that first okay so one minute so i'm just resizing it okay now i think you should be able to see the screen fine <coughs> i'll be interspersing my talk with actual instructions on how to use the software along with some background and some concepts and things like that so first let me introduce the way i was uh, developing the software and the way the software came into existence i started my practice in 1987 in in uh, navi mumbai i had graduated from iit kharagpur a leading institute from india and 3 uh, years down the line after working with some other architect i started my own practice so i was quite young and one pressing issue was that nobody was there to uh, who were interested in joining me so i was not getting any architects so i had to figure out ways by which i can do sensible design so it automatically took me to Uh, using some software some drafting software and uh, it never worked out draft drafting cannot be used for designing so i had uh, uh, i did have a couple of draftsmen who were working for me in the beginning and the problem i found was that when i used to go on site visits or meet a client and when i returned back i found that my draftsman was lying was not uh, was uh, lying meaning uh, they were uh, sitting empty empty handed they were just sitting there because they were waiting for instructions from me and i realized that how much ever you computerize uh, 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 whatever portion of your uh, office unless and until th those software actually points out real things and real issues uh, then uh, then only will a draftsman actually act upon it so i had uh, uh, some software some drafting software and what used to happen was these people uh, will get confused and they will be sitting idle and the whole office will be generally lying idle uh, waiting for my presence once again and when i started out analyzing it i realized that the software is not uh, just a tool uh, to just uh, draw lines and things like that those lines have to mean something then only my draftsman would work on it so that got me thinking and then i started i uh, entered the area of software programming uh, and uh, one thing led to another and i developed certain concepts on how i could possibly represent architecture in a way uh, that can be really useful for an architect especially when he's in his he just started uh, working out his design so uh, a a theory in uh, evolved uh, which involved the use of spaces rather than built matter my contention was uh, or the way i worked was that uh, 
that uh, an architect starts with with uh, understanding the bubble diagram and space relationships and things like that in the initial stage and even in that initial stage an architect needs to query some aspect of his design like for example i would like to know uh, what kind of areas were uh, being developed what are the quantities of that what are the area calculations in those initial stages also like now remember this was happening all in india india is a very messy place as far as architecture is concerned and i was working especially in a very messy area i was uh, developing work in navi mumbai which is a satellite city of mumbai and that particular city uh, was being developed very furiously it came up from a lot of marshes here it's probably one of the largest projects uh, anywhere in the world the city is almost uh, uh, i think about 80% of the size of greater mumbai Uh, so it's pretty huge and there's a lot of work going on and still going on there a lot of activity going on there a lot of construction so there's when such uh, uh, construction is going on at such furious pace it's uh, people do not really wait for you an architect ha- is forced to work very fast so if i had a software which was just allowing me to draw lines and and if i had to query it i have to draw or give instructions all over again like for example in a drafting software if i give uh, uh, if i draw four lines and then later on if i want to query what is the area of that that room which had those four lines then i'll have to actually mark out the vertices all over again or join those four lines together into p line and then query the p line and ask what is the area of that p line and things like that that was too too slow and uh, it involved uh, the person actually continuously interacting with the software So I started thinking about it and I said that uh, this is not really the way we- an architect would like to uh, to query his uh, ongoing design especially in the initial stage. So I developed this theory where I actually flipped around the whole concept of uh, what is drafting normally in uh, or wha- how you model things normally Uh, in school and in college and all we are expected that an architect is uh, expected to delineate what is built like you for example you will use very dark lines to represent those a- built areas which have been cut through so the section and all is delineated with dark lines and what is uh, spaces are considered as uh, like by products of the solid so you if you have a room and you have four walls surrounding the room what you do is you don't really draw the room instead you draw the four walls and having drawn the four walls it is assumed that the room has come into existence i kind of flip that whole thing around i said that hang on that is not what my interest lies as an architect i am first interested in knowing where are the spaces and how are these spaces interconnected with each other very much similar to what happens with bubble diagrams and space relationship diagrams and things like that and that uh, and at that stage also i would want to query it and query th- that uh, d- emerging model and qu- find out how uh, and where the areas are what d- what the areas were and and things like that so this was the the kind of conceptual context I- of practice and a young practice and a furious practice with lot of work going on and uh, i had to be very responsible and and clear about what i'm going to tell my clients about what i'm going to make and how much is the flow space index which my project is going to consume and things like that and they all needed that information uh, yesterday it was like you know th- they're so desperate they wanted everything now or yesterday like so everything was going so fast so that was a context and so i kind of said that okay let me have a system which is uh, uh going to talk about the spaces query the spaces and then also talk about the built matter uh, so i said that why can't i have built matter coming as a by product of the spaces which is rather curious because that's not how uh, architects are trained to do we are trained to first think about the built matter and then we are kind of uh, s- spaces for some reason are treated like step children it's like you know okay you made the four walls so therefore the spaces are emerging but that's not true actually people live in spaces they don't live inside walls like 
and we always uh, need to know what is happening to those spaces and finally what is a wall a wall is finally was a space which is further filled in with uh, solid matter that is how a wall is developed or any built matter is developed so built matter also essentially was space once upon a time into which f you fill in uh, some matter into it so this gave birth to a uh, a taxonomy uh, a classification system of architectural elements where i said that okay what is built matter so it came up like an invariance i said built matter is the the what is uh, left behind after you take the outer envelope of enveloping volume of a of a building and then take out the inside uh, rooms from that building the rooms were called as atoms i'll tell you why later and then you take out the openings and uh, so if you which i call this connectors so you say built matter is equal to envelope minus in open brackets atoms plus connectors so that was the invariance so wh whichever project you look at you'll find that uh, this particular invariance uh, holds true so built matter is always going to be the outer envelope and subtract from the outer envelope all the other spaces which is there inside that particular project and based on that tad designer came into existence this is called tad designer light because it has got some small geometric deficiency so it's still a light version and uh, it was good enough for my practice so here it is this is the default model which gets uh, created so i'm showing you in front of you a default model which opens up and it it loads a particular file called tad.td4 if you don't like that you can always change that with something which you like and you can have a different default model appearing whenever you start a new uh, project inside uh, tad now tad stands for the architect's desktop and remember this was happening in 1989 which is pretty prescient at that time because uh, uh you're talking about a designing system which serves as a complete desktop it's like you know i i i don't want to go anywhere else i want just one place where everything is done so usually uh, or almost always uh, i have only one model file uh, which represents one complete project whatever it may be it is not divided into plan section elevation and separate drawings and all that now all this is a concept which is now used in building information modelers so if you look at current building information modeler they also talk about one model instead of repeating various parts of the model separately and so on and so forth so this was happening in 1989 i wrote my first version in dos and then it went on to windows 3.1 and and uh, windows 98 and and uh, all the windows version and and it so happened that it uh, even works on a mac as well as on linux using some emulation software so it's it's pretty versatile and the files are very small uh, and you can create a, a fair amount of uh, detail and fair amount of information in these uh, models which you develop so it, it helped a lot in working out the initial design stages now how to use this particular software many people when i uh, show this software or they download it and they use it they kind of get extremely confused because it really uh, it does not uh, make much sense because they are coming from the context of having drawn built matter first rather than built the actual spaces first whereas here it's the other way around here you have to first draw the spaces and the built matter also emerges eventually so that disconnect kind of confuses many and this particular talk hopefully will set that uh, that particular notion uh, and the uh, right way of doing it the way we do it with that designer so that uh, hopefully it will get corrected now how to use this software in front of you you have a very big white space here which represents the actual site on which your designing is happening i used to call it a site i still call it a site it's not a drawing sheet and now it is quite uh, such a concept is uh, quite comfortable with many architects because uh, we have actually used uh, building information modelers and things like that but earlier this was in 1989 when people were using only drafting software it was very confusing because in those software they had concepts like paper extents and and what's the size of the paper you're going to use and things like that and you had concepts like erasing a line and making a line and things like that which i didn't have and that was 
doubly confusing because you you don't have any commands for actually erasing a line for example in this particular software which was terribly confusing for various people i remember one one particular incident in one of my workshop one of one guy got so angry he he just walked out of my talk midway he said that uh, what a rubbish software it does not have uh erasing of a line because my software is actually not talking about lines or anything like that it is talking actually about spaces now how do you use the software it's pretty easy actually if you once you get over this concept of first talking about spaces that's why i read out that at south seeing court and right in the beginning that uh, the usefulness of any project for a human being is based on what are the spaces which are available there and how those spaces are are delineated and uh, and how they can be used anyway so let me describe the interface a bit there are a couple f- f- one toolbar right on the top here one toolbar uh, on the right another one below and there are two information panes here there is one pane pane as in p a n e not p a i n i hope it is not p a i n now there is one information pane here and there's another information pane here using which you can uh, talk about various things in this particular model the toolbar on top uh, is uh, pretty standard you can create a new mo- tad model uh, you can work on several tad models at the same time if you wish so uh this software does not uh, have much uh, uh consumption of resources so I- it it should be reasonably comfortable to work on two three models at the same time then you have some buttons for saving and things like that you have undo and and all that you have a button here for for previewing it in 3d and uh you have some extensions which has been written uh, in the software which i will describe what they are and uh, you'll see a status bar strangely the status bar here uh, is right on top uh, what i when i designed this user interface i said that people are doing a lot of activities at the top portion of the window so they instead of flipping your eye and flitting your eye below what and to see read the status let me read the status uh, from the top itself so as you keep your uh, move your mouse you can read what is happening to that part on the right hand side you'll see the status changing the right hand side you have uh, some controls here which is for zooming panning and things like that and selecting objects and and there are certain ways a very clever ways of selecting objects so you can choose only the ones which you want to see on the bottom are the actually the creation and editing tools and that's all there is there is there, there is nothing more complicated than this it's just a very simple set of commands and all you have to know is to is uh, all you have to do is to use these uh, commands and and learn how this works and uh, that's the only thing which you have to worry about okay so that describes the user interface so let's start